camera can also reveal relationships of families and ideas and things, some impossible to see with a naked eye. The inside architecture of our own bodies. The secret beauty of how roses bloom. The frozen millionths of a second during the service of a tennis ball. The camera can record the look of events too terrible for man's own naked eye to see. Truly our modern world would be a different and less wonderful place without the camera's all-seeing, all-revealing eye. Type the camera obscura. This was actually a man-made eye, a dark box fitted with a tiny hole or lens through which light could pass. Artists could see in the camera obscura a true picture of reality, drawn on this ground glass screen by the light of the sun. If only some magic way could be found to fix this picture, make it permanent. Why then, they thought, every man with help from the sun could make perfect images. Joseph Nicephore Niepce, Louis-Jacques Daguerre. These were the men, with the Englishman, Fox Talbot, who in the beginning of the 19th century invented the first practical systems of photography. The early daguerreotype plates were slow. Only still subjects like sculpture could be photographed because exposure had to be as long as an hour. One day, Daguerre photographed a street in Paris. It happened that on the sidewalk stood a man having his boots blacked. He stood still long enough, this unknown gentleman, to become the first man ever to be photographed. One of the most famous freelance photojournalists is a man named Ouija, a kind of photographic primitive and an amateur at heart Ouija, like other amateurs, delights in casing the camera stores for new equipment. Much of Ouija's income has been earned from murder. late afternoon in his combination dark room and bed just off Times Square. He lights up last night's cigar butt and sets about his day's work. The western shore of the North American continent, on the northern coast of California, is a promontory of land called Point Lobos. For almost 50 years, a man, a photographer, lived and worked here, leaving the ocean and rocks for occasional photographic journeys across America, but always returning to the place he loved best, Point Lobos, California. This is Edward Weston one of the great camera artists in the history of photography. For the whole first half of our 20th century, this little man devoted himself to his craft, making pictures that have earned him honors and international fame, working with a singleness of purpose and purity of spirit, almost religious in nature. Edward 
Thompson has recorded the power of the Pacific, the way it pounds the shore, carving out of solid rock strange forms and sculptures. Edward Weston used hardly any equipment or procedure that was not known in the year 1900. Weston and his sons photograph on 8 by 10 inch film and never make enlargements. They print by contact in an old fashioned wooden printing frame and use an out of style developer named Amidol which produces richly beautiful tones. What stains the fingernails are jet black. And then for Brett comes that magic moment known to every photographer when the pure white paper develops up into a photographic print. Some toadstools near the studio caught my eye, and then two more. These lowly vegetables seemed a mystery, and through the camera's eye, I tried to reveal their form more clearly than the eye itself could see. I felt myself a discoverer, a Columbus, exploring new miniature worlds never before seen by man. Soon, close was no longer good enough. I had to get inside these vegetable worlds, photographing the architecture of their hearts. discovered the beauty of the green pepper. Most other vegetable species are much alike, one eggplant or squash being similar to another. But the green pepper is an individualist. Its genes like to play games, experiment with strange mutations. Now friends began to say they saw in my vegetables symbolic human forms like lovers embracing. This surprised me and shocked me at first, for I see in the vegetables only abstract forms. Yet when friends point out these resemblances, I must admit, yes, I see what you mean.